Of course, apparently I'm still not important enough to get an RTX 3070 at launch, which makes sense, I guess. So all I can do is talk about why the RTX 3070 Founders Edition cooler is a very clever design. Before that, I have to mention that Nvidia is doing a crappy thing where they're staggering the review NDAs on the Founders Edition cards yesterday and the custom card reviews coming in later. Which is why I couldn't make the usual which RTX 3070 card to buy video yet. So here's what I found out about the RTX 3070 Founders Edition design that's super interesting instead. Nvidia is doing their new aesthetic design with an aluminium band that covers the heat sinks. And this extends all the way to the RTX 3080 and 3090 cards. And in my opinion, this new design is also a very good looking card. But what's important is that the aluminium shroud that goes around the card actually does serve a purpose for cooling. On the RTX 3070 Founders Edition, you can see how Nvidia separates the two fans with the aluminium shroud. And that's not just for aesthetics purposes. They're purposely separating the two fans airflow. Just like how they did with the RTX 3080 and 3090 cards. Just in a different way this time. Let's start with the fan closest to the rear IO bracket, which I'll call the rear fan. Here you can see the fan sits over a two-piece heatsink where half of the fan sits over horizontally oriented fins and the other half over diagonally oriented fins. The horizontal fins are there so that the half of the fan's airflow that blows onto that section of the heatsink flows horizontally and out through the rear IO bracket's exhaust grill, while the second half of the fan's airflow goes to the diagonal fins and gets directed upwards towards the open part of the shroud towards the 12-pin power connector area. And for the front fan, you can see the fins are all diagonally oriented, because it does not matter in this case. About 3 fourths of the fan's airflow just blows straight through the back of the card, through the open section on the card's backplate. While the 1 fourth of the fan's airflow that's blocked by the rear on the PCB is going through the diagonal fins and be directed downwards towards the open section of the shroud towards the PCIe slot. This is a very small amount of air that's directed downwards compared to the exhaust flows that goes in the other directions. This is very intentional, since the airflow that's directed downwards towards the PCIe slot area is always the worst place for exhaust airflow, since it will always be blocked by the motherboard and recirculated back into the fans. Nvidia's careful control of airflow through the heatsink seems to have the goal of preventing recirculation of hot air back into the fans as much as possible which happens a lot on more typical GPU cooler designs where the airflow cannot flow through the back and they have a simple vertical or horizontal fin design. On vertical fin designs on most typical high-powered cards, exactly half of the fan's airflow exhausts out the heatsink towards the bottom of the PCIe slot area, which will just get blocked by the motherboard, and then recirculated back into the heatsink via the fans. Horizontal fin designs, on the other hand, are usually found on lower wattage cards, as they can usually only be effectively used with two fans. On these designs, the rear fan towards the rear bracket has the airflow directed towards the exhaust fan on the bracket, while the front fan's airflow will exhaust out the front of the card towards the front of your case, which will usually just fight with the natural airflow of most PC cases. While this is not a big problem, this is not the most ideal situation. And a lot of the airflow that's between the two fans will kind of fight each other and go out the sides of the heatsink all over the place. So these more typical heatsink designs just eject a lot of airflow all over the place uncontrollably. And this is not ideal because they will just mostly get recirculated, especially when directed towards the PCIe slot where the airflow will just get blocked by the motherboard and recirculated and sucked back into the fans. As a direct result of the recirculation, there is a higher intake temperature into the fans. While on the NVIDIA Founders Design cards, the airflow into the fans is almost purely cool air which will greatly increase the effectiveness of the heatsink. This is because the heat flows from hot to cold, and the measurement of thermal resistance of a heatsink is in Kelvin per watt, which calculates the required amount of temperature delta between the heatsink to the air measured in Kelvin per 1 watt of heat dissipation. Lower is better in this regard since you would need less temperature delta per watt of power dissipated. This value for a heatsink is usually affected by the heatsink's material, surface area, and the airflow. Let's say that the thermal resistance is a certain value, then the way to increase the amount of wattage dissipated by the heatsink is by lowering the temperature entering the heatsink, which will increase the temperature delta in the equation. This explains how Nvidia's new card is barely larger than the old RTX 2070 heatsink which uses horizontally oriented fins Yet it can cool a GPU with a 220 watt TDP, which is the same as an RTX 2080 which has a much larger heatsink. 
That's all I can say about the RTX 3070 Founders Edition at this point, just about the cooler, which people might not be hyping it up as much as the RTX 3080 or 3090 with the wacky rear fan setup, but it's still very much a clever heatsink design from Nvidia. This will be very hard for custom cards to beat, as we've just seen with the RTX 3080 and 3090. That's because most custom cards just rely on brute forcing it with using more fans and a larger heatsink, while Nvidia's approach is more of doing clever airflow control for better heatsink efficiency. But that's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it and found it as interesting as I did, and if you liked it maybe click like on the video and comment down below about what you think of Nvidia's cooler designs. Subscribe to my channel to see more interesting videos like this one, and thanks for watching!